My talk is titled The You in Education, uh, largely because I submitted an abstract at 1 a.m. Uh, long before I had actually finished the presentation. Uh, so my title is actually a bit misleading because I'm, instead I'm going to talk about the me in education. <laughs> sort of a juggling act here with the book, the remote, and the microphone, so bear with me. For all the English teaching assistants here in Spain, our roles are very similar, working as native English speakers to support bilingual programs. We all go into the classroom with a level of preparedness that allows us to take on even the toughest of challenges. As Fulbrighters, we all feel something like this every day. <laughs> Bringing American culture to our schools is a large part of what we do here. I dressed up as a oh, strange, vampire on Halloween, oh no, Santa Claus on Christmas, <laughs> and my students dressed their turkeys up as me on Thanksgiving <laughs> and received as a Christmas present. <laughs> Uh, okay, all right, flip forward. So, I've seen tremendous growth in my students during my time here. They've learned how to express their opinions. In one of my classes, there was a topic that was so talked about, so controversial, so divisive, that every one of my students threw his or her opinion into the fray. Justin Bieber. <laughs> it was either, I like, I hate, I love, I dislike, and each one of them was, was pretty firm. So anyway, in supporting this discussion, I've managed to be relatable to my students or keep my street cred, even going as far as belting out a few verses of somebody to love to the squealing adoration of 12-year-old girls. <laughs> so here we have uh, one of the initiatives that I started at the school. Uh, because the activities I plan are like my own public school education greatest hits. I love the initiative I've been able to take at Instituto Clara Campo Amor. I've started a spelling bee, sustainability day, and cartooning contest. One of the most rewarding parts of my time here has been tying my own interests and passions, which include cartooning and winning spelling bees, <laughs> to activities for the students. So these were some of the submissions we received in our latest cartooning contest, the theme for which was Impossible Love, Amor Imposible. It was, it was quite nice. They're, they're quite, quite a talented bunch. Okay. Yes, okay. As long as this one works, that's what counts. Um, the thing I'm most excited to share with you today is my webcomic and side project, Extron Hero. I started this comic travelogue as a different way of fulfilling Fulbright's mission to increase mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of other countries. So the concept is simple. One foreigner in Spain, one piece of paper, 12 markers. <laughs> Since I wanted to create comics in a quick, efficient manner, instead of spending hours on Photoshop, instead of integrating with the outside culture, I drew a sketch in my notebook with a few supplies, take a photo against the background, usually a brick floor, and upload it to Blogger, which I then link to Facebook. This has helped me share my experiences with people in Spain and back home. So for me, it per serves as a perfect creative outlet. So here are a few samples. <laughs> One of the experiences I had fun writing about was the three days I spent uh, without luggage at Colegio Mayor Mandel during orientation. <laughs> I don't know if any of you noticed, but um, since, I was out a change, with, since I was without a change of clothes, I wore the same t-shirt and pants for all three days. <laughs> I also drew 
the breakfast I eat every day at the cafeteria across from my school. Pan con tomate. Yeah, we'll just leave it. Yeah, on that one. Uh, pan con tomate, a zumo de naranja, and café con leche. I presented the original sketch to the café owner, uh, at which point he gave me a firm handshake and then framed and placed it in the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was quite rewarding. I felt like I was making an impact. Uh, and then there's another strip, and you'll, you'll, if you check out the blog, you can see all of them there, uh, in which I signed up for merengue classes recently offered at my school. The sign-up sheet required an alias, so I li listed myself as Michael El Gato Negro Young. <laughs> there was another episode which I can uh, actually show you right here. On Tuesday, I was locked in the bathroom. <laughs> and <laughs> for 10 minutes, I was knocking on the door, standing on the toilet to see if I could stare out the window, call someone back. Like, it was just awful, embarrassing. And then finally, I like, tried calling my coordinator's cell phone, see if I could do this subtly. I'm knocking on the door, and I hear voices, oh, it's Miguel. And then, <laughs> and then finally, the door swings open, and there's 30 students from my Fusion of Epic class just staring at this episode. And I was just mortified, but you know what I said? This is quality material for Extra and Hero. <laughs> uh, there's another one uh, which I highlight some of the cultural differences between the U.S. and Spain. A few of which are the buttons needed to push the door open on the metro, uh, eating dinner at 10 p.m. when I'm about to go to bed, and some of those tiny, non-absorbent, practically translucent napkins that you find exclusively at Spanish cafes. <laughs> so, in an act of shameless self-promotion, I encourage you to read Extron Hero at extronhero.blogspot.com. <laughs> and like the Extra on Hero Facebook page. I'll, I'll find you, I'll send it out. Uh, so I'll keep this going uh, for as many days as I can during the rest of my time here to document uh, these ex wonderful, meaningful experiences. <laughs> so that's about it. Thank you for your time and attention. Uh, I'm incredibly happy to be surrounded by so many of you who inspire me with your incredible talents and gifts. Thank you.